Hello there, I'm Adam and in today's video, I want to show you why this lens, the 70 to 200, is one of the most exciting focal ranges we can use for landscape photography. We're gonna go out and about into the landscape and hopefully you can pick up some tips and tricks and things you can do with this lens that are exciting and will result in some truly unique images. Come with me. Before we get into it today though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website, or an online store, then make your next move with Squarespace. So I do really love this lens, but it's not really this one specifically. It's the 70 to 200 millimeter focal range that I really enjoy. So you can pull those details out of the landscape. But I don't wanna waste any more time in the studio today. Let's get out and about into the landscape, put this to good use, and we might capture a little image on wide angle as well, but we'll talk a bit more about this lens in a second. Let's go. One of the reasons I love carrying the 70 to 200 lens with me is because you just never know when an opportunity is going to present itself. Something that's totally unplanned. A little thing that sparks your imagination or grabs your attention. Those little things, those little details in the landscape are what this lens can really pull out. Now, it's very windy and it's actually surprisingly cold for late May, but I have come across something very, very interesting and it just immediately captured my attention. And it's just down here, it's this little sapling tree just down here and it's surrounded by this heather. And because it's just sticking up a little bit, it's catching that sunlight and it's just separated from the background so, so nicely. So the, the ground below it is in complete shadow and the tree is blowing about in the wind but it's got that beautiful evening light on it and as soon as I walked past it I just got immediately excited because of that contrast it's a kind of photograph that I really like it's going to create something I think that is relatively unique hopefully it is presenting some challenges though because of the amount of wind and the amount that it's moving so I'm going to deal with that in the settings of the camera. So I've gone for a vertical shot uh, because I want a little bit of the light in the foreground just to lead us into that tree, which is then gonna be actually quite dark because I'm going to essentially underexpose the image to emphasize that contrast difference between the brightness of the light on the tree and then the shadow behind it. So the settings I'm going for are f4 this is an f4 lens so i'm going for the biggest aperture possible because a lot of the background is going to be quite dark anyway so i i don't need that much depth i just want the tree in focus so for that i'm at f4 that's given me a little bit extra wiggle room with the light so i can go to one one thousandth of a second at iso 400 and despite this really heavy wind that's then giving me the ability to freeze that tree, freeze that action as it's blowing about wildly in the wind, as you can see here. Got that beautiful sunlight on it. I'm on the two second timer. I'm just focusing in the tree, although I have switched into manual focus. Two second timer, I'm just gonna block the sun from the lens. And that's so interesting. Let me just bring that up again. That's so interesting. That beautiful little sapling tree isolated against that background just out of nowhere, a fantastic little shot. Subtle, interesting, and I'm really, really happy with that. <laughs> I love this lens. It just, every single time I walk past something that's interesting like this, it's this lens that seems to get the shot for me. <laughs> just so exciting and so unique as well. So 
so I'm set up for another shot and this is a little spot that I have visited before during the autumn and I was inspired by it then although on that day I was here a bit earlier in the day so the sun was coming from this way but this is the scene I have and it's this fantastic pair of pine trees as you can see there I've now got the sun coming from just behind me that way and striking those trees from the side the sun is beautiful and warm I'm about to lose it behind the bank of cloud that shows itself in this location so very very often in there but it's just fantastic and then I've got this dry stone wall funnily enough I'm not always a fan of having man-made objects in my landscape photographs but this is so old it's ragged it's no longer maintained there's gaps in it and this just creates an interesting shape and also works as a leading line coming in from the left hand side of the image now Another thing I don't really like in a lot of my landscape images is a large amount of green. However, in the spring, which we are bang in the middle of now, despite the temperatures, I do like that bright, luscious spring green. It's been a little bit late this year because it was so dry. It has now been raining a lot. So that luscious green has come out and this grass that I'm stood on that sort of leads down this line here is just that fantastic lush green the sort of pine needles on the tree are a luscious green as well and yeah it's just forming a really nice kind of green blue contrast with the sky there is some color in the clouds over there which is interesting and then some sort of clouds above there's still probably not as many clouds as i would have liked i'd like a few more but still it's looking like a really nice composition there's just a little bit of light touching these leaves and this little bit of heather that's down here I, if the heather was flowering i don't think it would make much difference because there isn't really a massive amount of that in there probably would help but just fantastic at the moment the sun's in just the right place as well even though i'm going to lose it very very soon so let me take an image two second time i'm focusing on the bit of the wall there so it's probably about a third of the way into my frame the trees are in focus but f16 one one hundredth of a second because i want to freeze the movement in the branches caused by that wind so i've boosted the iso to 320 to give me that one one hundredth of a second just as i'm about to lose the sun oh, it's lovely and warm looks great the particularly the light on the wall is just golden and fantastic bringing out some of the sort of subtle coppery reds that are in that brick which adds another dimension to the colour of this frame <sighs> Right, don't go anywhere because I want to print that image that I took with the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. And I want to just share with you some of the issues that sometimes you might have printing images that have a lot of black in them. But before we talk about that, as you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now Squarespace is just the best place, in my opinion, for photographers to create a website and the reason I love it and use it for my website is that I don't have a lot of time and creating a website on Squarespace you can do it yourself with just very minimal amounts of technical knowledge you just drag and drop blocks into parts of the page and using their templates and using some of your images and then a little bit of your text you will very quickly have a beautiful fully functioning website up and running. If you then want to start selling some items like prints or merch, you can upgrade it into uh, an online store and that's really easy to do as well. They've got great customer service and if you go to squarespace.com you can start your free trial today and then if you build your website and like what you have created, use the offer code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off your first 
purchase. Right, so I want to print that image of the tree and that's not always straightforward to do when you've got an image that's got a lot of black in it, particularly in landscape photography where there's shrubbery or undergrowth because what I've done is printed it at first on this smaller A4 page and this is a matte photorec paper which is really nice for landscape photography but the problem is is that when you've got this much black this shows black really really well and it actually looks a bit blotchy because these dark areas have just become solid black and that makes no sense when it's undergrowth you want a little bit of detail in those shadow areas and this paper is just not giving me that uh and I've tried adjusting it. I've got it right on previous occasions with other images, but it's just too difficult with this one because it's so dark and there's such dark areas around it. So I've had to, with my print file, up the exposure so much. I think what I'm gonna try now is to print it with a semi-gloss with that upped exposure. And I think that's gonna come out right. And hopefully it will show you just how much of an art printing is all by itself. So the uh, paper I'm using is a semi-gloss from Canson. It's called the Canson Burrito Photographic 2. Beautiful paper. Let's stick that through the printer now. Hope that it comes out looking good and then I can show you an image created with that 70 to 200 millimeter lens that hopefully I'm going to be really happy with. Right, there we go then, and I am absolutely thrilled with that. I think it's come out really, really nicely. As you can see, I've still got some of the detail down in the shadow areas now, but it still really places the emphasis on that tree. You can see as it's reflecting the video light here that it is now on that semi-gloss paper, which might not be to everybody's taste, but I love this paper. It just brings out the color and you get more detail in the shadow areas and it's just now perfect for this image so yeah just a fun little trip out a couple of really nice images that i'm very very happy with and will be going up on the wall please do like the video and subscribe to the channel i'll be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments down below and i'll see you again very very soon